Hello everyone, and welcome to Applied Social Media Marketing, a short course presented by IT Masters on behalf of Charles Sturt University. My name is Guy Coward and I'll be your MC for this webinar and for the duration of the course. Your mentor is Andrew Mashman, who you'll hear from shortly. Before we begin, some housekeeping. All webinars for this course will be held at 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, with recordings made for those of you who cannot attend on a given night. Despite the recordings, if you can make it, uh, we hope you'll attend the live webinars and contribute to a collaborative learning environment. We encourage the asking of questions and the use of chat during the webinar, and we use two methods to do so. We ask that you direct all questions relevant to course content that Andrew is talking about to the Q&A section and that you send all administration type questions, dates, times, resource availability, any details about the course to the short, uh, to the support team in chat. You can chat with panelists only or to all of your fellow students as well. Uh, and you can make that choice by toggling through the drop down box once you've opened the chat log and the icons for the chat and the Q&A um, are at the bottom of your, your Zoom window. I really encourage the use of chat um, as there are usually some, some very experienced industry-based attendees who are always helpful with any queries you might have that, you, that aren't particularly relevant to the course, but are, are um, questions that you want to have answered anyway, um, and just to hear stories about their experiences. We'll have Q&A sessions periodically through the webinars um, or if any questions are particularly relevant, I'll in interject during any of Andrew's discussions. For those of you who have never taken part in a short course with us, IT Masters is a training organisation that exists as a partner to CSU, who we work with to create and deliver a number of their master's, co master's courses. We also market these courses on their behalf and think and hope that the best way to do that is to give some of, some of it away free. If we do a good enough job, then students will be encouraged to enrol in the full master's or grad certificate if it suits them. With that said, this course stands alone in its own right and is its own reward. We want you to learn some useful information, have some fun, and hopefully make connections with some of your fellow students. To date, over 3,000 people have enrolled in this short course, so you're spoiled for choice as to who to chat with. Chantel and Angus are around tonight, as well as Sophie, in, a, in an administrative and technical support role for IT Masters. And they're also responsible for the learn.itmasters.edu.au website, or the course page, which is where you'll find the other materials needed for this course. Links to readings, discussion forums, quizzes, anything that's going on. Andrew's introduction video, for example. If you have any questions tonight or later on, uh, please feel free to contact us using the details on the, on the Moodle page, the course page. Next week, I'll talk a bit about CSU and give you an idea of what studying with, with CSU is all about and how these short courses can help you in completing a postgraduate course. So if you have any questions about that, please hold them over and hopefully I'll answer them then. Uh, we have a guest lecture to, lecturer tonight, Tim Hill. Tim is co-founder of social analytics platform, Social Status and has advertising and marketing experience in both the public and private sectors. You'll hear more from him a little bit later. Andrew Mashman is the course mentor and is an experienced lecturer with CSU, as well as an, ex an obsessive marketer who's worked with and consulted to a broad range of industries to build knowledge about innovation and application in marketing. Andrew loves technology and sees its adoption as critical to all organizations' future. And you can follow Andrew on LinkedIn or Twitter using at A Mashman. He developed and presented another short course for IT Masters a little bit before my time a few years ago, which was very successful. So I'm very excited to hear what he has to say. Uh, can you please welcome Andrew Mashman? Howdy, Guy. Um, Andrew Mashman here, everybody. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, I'm just so excited to be back here to do another short course for IT Masters and uh, in a space which I really enjoy because um, the, digital, the digital world is just what it's all about. Um, businesses are hiring digital transformation managers, uh, technology is being applied in massive amounts and talking about robotics and artificial intelligence and virtual reality and those kind of things. 
and it just one end of that or one simple part of that is how we communicate and uh, social media has become such a massive part of how we actually you know get through our days i guess at the uh, at the end of things and um how we engage both our friends and families but also really importantly in the business space how do we engage customers so that we can get outcomes which meet the needs of our our small startup growth hacking organizations or of our large corporate bodies that might be out there so i really welcome everybody along to the to the session and uh, i look forward to answering your questions as guys mentioned there's a number of different ways to fire questions at us and we're also monitoring social media twitter particularly tonight um to to see questions that pop up in that space and if we we can't get to them tonight for any reason then we'll uh aim to answer them in the ensuing week as it, as it comes up for the week after okay so i'm going to start flicking through some slides and um what i just want to give you some context to this course and and me personally, I'm a little bit of a strategist. I'm mad for education. And uh, just in the last few days, I've been working with a couple of girls who are from an Australian program called Superstars of STEM. And you know, the, the changes that education can make to people's lives is fantastic. And so I'm super passionate about that as well. And so short courses, particularly a way that everybody can get involved and people who are in this course are from literally all over the world i'm sure probably not all of them are listening to it live right now because it might be quite late in the evening where they are but um it's it's a way to to get information out to share that information and if people sit on information nobody gets any smarter so we're sharing information we're hopefully stimulating your desire to to even learn even more and to become better at the things that you already do and uh, in work they're talking about new collar jobs changing work environments and being on top of technology and as part of that, social media is one of the, the critical things that goes on. So Charles State University is launching a new course, which is called the Master of Applied Digital Marketing next year. And if you just notice the acronym to that, it's just M-A-D-M. So our mad marketing hashtag is driven out of that. Uh, I'll talk more about that a little bit later. And within that particular course, which would probably take you roughly two years to study as an external student, there's a subject called uh, Applied Social Media Marketing, which is called MGI 553. And um, you can click on the link on the slide you can see at the moment and in the deck that you might have access to as a PDF, and it'll take you to where that course is and you'll see this particular subject there. So what we're dealing with over the next few weeks is um, a piece of an actual master's degree course. And there's numbers, numbers of ways to get involved in that or in the what's called the graduate certificate, which is a fantastic way to start some academic work if you're, um, I guess, a bit unsure or you just like to do a toe in the water or you don't want to commit for a long time. And you'll see in the first blue square on the bottom um, side of the screen there is MGI 553. And so what we've done is we've taken some bits and pieces from that subject and we're going to elaborate on those over the next uh, four weeks and particularly by looking at some different forms of social media. And tonight, especially, I'm going to kind of capsule, encapsulate that in a digital framework so it fits in as part of a digital marketing plan. And that way, marketers can get context. You can get buy-in from your organization. You can get sign-off in your organization. You can um, take your social media plans, particularly to the people who have the resources, the money, time, or the effort, and get them to buy into what you want to do and how it's going to affect the way your organization works. So we'll probably revisit that slide in coming weeks as well, but that's kind of the structure of both the masters where you've got 12 subjects and a graduate certificate which is just four subjects and a great toe in the water as I mentioned. So a couple of things about the social platform marketing subject there is um, we're looking at collecting uh, putting some bits and pieces together in this course to, to give you some tangible outcomes which you can you can take to the workplace and use. So a couple of things we've picked out of the subject objectives to drive through this course is the analyzing um, the value of different social platforms as they, as they may or may not work for your organization and lots of people you run into will just go, oh yeah, social media, yeah, just dive in there, make some posts. It's a lot more complicated than that and it's massively more resource intensive than people anticipate it to be. So if it's not gonna work for you, you probably would be doing something else. But if it's going to work for you, then it's a great place to get into and it's a great place to work really well in that space. And we've got some examples tonight of how that's gonna happen. The second uh, objective, which we're gonna try and deliver on in this course as well, is how does um, social platform strategy work when it comes together 
um, maybe using a variety of social platforms, some different analytics tools, et cetera, to achieve an organization's communications goals. Whether it's um, uh, the, the quit smoking lobby in Australia, government funded campaigns to make that happen, whether it's Air New Zealand wanting to get more people to fly on their planes, or it's the um, Australian cricket team trying to improve their popularity, all organizations have goals. And if they're not meeting them, again, you're really kind of wasting resources by getting involved in them. By the end of this course also, you should have a series of at least three worksheets and a fourth one, which is sort of an integrating plan, which will allow you to, to put all these, say three social media tools at least into play in part of your strategy for an organization. So that's kind of the take home and the take out of this course as well to make that happen. And again, it's in a format which is used in a variety of organizations. We try to keep that as simple as possible. So lots of people can understand and you can pass it up through the organization, get buy in, get sign off on it and make it work as well. Cool. So, um, I hope you're following with me there. Uh, my plan over the next five weeks in this course is firstly tonight talk about digital strategy and some broad things about social platforms and some of the stats behind why this is a still a growing area. Social media is maturing for sure, but there's a bunch of things going on in this space that are moving so quickly. And in fact, they're moving so quickly that I um, have got a range of special guest speakers who will be attending. We've got Tim Hill tonight from Social Status. Next week, we've got Amy Whitfield, who's online tonight, listening and watching and probably tweeting at the same time as well, who's an Instagrammer and a content uh, developer through photography mainly. We've got Beth Powell from Digital Marketing Club coming up too in the third week. And then Alicia Booth, who's the Digital Transformation Manager at Lowe's. And that's a cool job title because... Here we have a business which has been traditionally in bricks and mortar retail and they've just seen the light and said, man, we've got to be in the online space or we're going to lose our bricks and mortar retail customers as well. So we've got all those guest speakers lined up to deliver on the, the four content topics that we've got listed there for you each week. Um, each week at the end of each session, there's a short five question quiz which will become available to you and you'll be able to complete that as a, as a way to sort of um, bookmark your progress through the course. And I guess if there's stuff there that you, you're not getting your head around or you'd like more information on, you can post some questions to the IT Masters Forum and we can help um, answer those questions in that space or live at our next session for you as well. So let's move on to tonight and uh, we're talking about digital strategy to kick off. Then we're going to have a bit of a deep dive into a tour of Twitter and uh, shortly I'm going to ask you to do a little um, activity for me which involves Twitter and then we'll wrap up tonight with Tim Hill, our guest speaker who's uh, from socialstatus.io. I thought um, just before we, we get into that, Andrew, we might actually launch a poll um, and see sort of what people are actually up to with social media at the moment. Um, Excellent. So I'll launch a poll now. And for those of you who are new to Zoom, you'll, you'll not know um, that we can actually have this poll live in the webinar, but I haven't figured out a way yet to make it in the recording. Um, Chantelle tends to do a screen shot and then we are... Uh, and we insert it from there. But the question is, uh, I'll read it out for those that don't see it, uh, which social media platforms do you currently use for your business? It's a multiple choice question. And we've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Pinterest, YouTube, other. And uh, we had to put in MySpace because we just needed to know who actually uses it still. Um, and 86% of people use Facebook. And then it's sort of goes down to 60 for Instagram and LinkedIn, 40 for Twitter, 40 for YouTube, and then sort of less than 10 for everything else. MySpace currently has four users. I hope you're all having a lot of fun there. 80% of people have voted so far. So I might end that poll and Excellent. share the result. What a great indication. And um, it does highlight the the power of Facebook, which we're going to talk about later, but there's a few things going on in the Facebook world, which are, are interesting. I'm a little fascinated there at the results for LinkedIn. So we've, we've obviously got a group of people yeah. on tonight who are strong in the business space and are probably using that for both developing business and network connections and their personal profile and those kind of things, which is, LinkedIn is an awesome tool for that and works really well. I'm a little right. surprised guy that Snapchat's so low. What do you think about that? Well, I don't have a smartphone, so I'm completely confused by everything that goes on here. Um, people who are uh, veterans of several short courses with IT Masters know I'm, I'm only a couple of steps removed from a Luddite. Um, so I'm just here for, for really the learning. 
Excellent indeed. And um, that's, you're the only person I do know that does not have a smartphone. I didn't think they actually sold non-smartphones these days. So maybe, are you still working in Nokia 3310, is it? Yeah, actually, that, they've got the new old ones. Um, <laughs> they sort of combine the best of, of the worst of both worlds. You, you don't have any of the storage or uh, ability to create your own ringtones, but you, and you can still access the internet, albeit in a rather limited capacity. Anyway, that's, a, that's enough about me. Um, I'll stop sharing those results and we'll, we'll get into the webinar. Thanks, everyone, for, for getting involved. That's good. We've probably got some other hardcore snake players there too, Guy, I would say, um, which would be still a, a game on your phone, I'm thinking. so. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you for that, Paul. That's really, really good. And it does, it'll uh, equate with some of the stats I'm going to show you very shortly. So that's terrific. I think it'll jump off my screen, will it? If I hit the cross, that's gone. Good stuff. So yeah, there you go. That's me. And I'm going to just duck onto the next slide there when I get the right part of the page working there as well. I've got a little activity for people to kick things off with uh, because I know you're all avid multitaskers and uh, we know at least 85% of uh, people in Australia are carrying smartphones. And I think it's around 60% of people worldwide are using smartphones as well. So um, Guy is certainly in uh, a minority space and we can cross him off our list of people that we're probably going to market to using our, um, our, our cool content, sound, audio, video movement, GPS locator, uh, posts and those kind of things because of the lack of that particular device in his hand. But for the rest of you guys, you may well be zooming watching our, our course on your smartphone as well. You'll be able to flick it to another screen and if you've actually set up a Twitter account or um, you feel like doing it in the next sort of half an hour or so, you can get involved in this particular um, activity for us. Uh, feel free to delete the account. So you might want to set up an account and just have a play with it. And then you can delete it a little bit later on if you're not comfortable in that environment. Um, certainly as a, as a social media user and as a marketer, some people would say, oh yes, you can have separation between your personal life and your work life, but it's increasingly difficult to do that. So uh, be, be careful as you think about moving into the, the social spaces about how your personal and your work life may overlap in the social media spaces. We'll talk more about that as we get through the course in coming weeks as well. So uh, go to twitter.com. Uh, if you've got an account, sign in if you'd like that. And uh, what I'd like people to do is to, to make a post per the blue screen on the blue box on the right hand side of the screen, which is uh, just high. And if we use the words, the at symbol and then IT masters, CSU, that is the name for the people who are hosting the course, IT Masters. That's their Twitter handle, as we would call it. And uh, just something like, look forward to be to the applied social media course, uh, or already enjoying the course, whatever you like there. I'm very flexible on that space there. And then the hashtag. So I get digital and hashtag mad marketing and hashtag IT masters. I'm going to talk about hashtagging a little bit later on tonight and how it helps us kind of collate and curate information together. And in fact, for some people and around some searches will make uh, finding pieces of information, certainly uh, photographs on Instagram, etc., much, much easier. So there's a little activity you can do in parallel with uh, what we've going on there as well. And uh, I've just got my smartphone sitting on the desk, desk next to me. So um, there's a few flashing up in that space already. So excellent. Thanks for that. So a bit of a definitional thing here to go. To develop an engaging digital strategy that works, you need to not only be a platform expert and Becoming a platform expert has become even more and more important over the last three years ago since we like did our last digital course. And uh, I suppose to that end, I've become less of a platform expert and more of a, a digital, I suppose, strategy person because the platforms have become so well developed in their own right. But for an organization, you need to have a kind of portfolio maybe of platforms and experts to make that work. And you might have it in your organization or you might outsource it to, to lots of people, um, including the likes of Beth who will be on in a few weeks and Amy and uh, even Alicia when she was running her own practice in that space as well. Um, so you have to be able to see the big picture. And this is one of my fundamental things about marketing is you have to understand who the customers are that you want to talk to and what is your organization's goals, be your startup, be your big organization, how are you going to mesh customers and those goals together in a communication strategy? So um, it's critical to be able to put those two things together. So everything we come back to in terms of um, social media, we'll come back to the question about 
what is the customer going to get out of that? How will they interact with that? Will they like it? Will they hate it? Will they share it, et cetera? And if it doesn't work for the customer, it's not going to work for your organization. And if your organization has got different goals to what the customers have, then that's when you find you have to spend a lot more money promoting communications, advertising, paid search, um, all of those sort of things to get that kind of mesh to happen. And it puts a lot more better uh, pressure on your price strategy as well. So on this slide here, there's a group called We Are Social and they're, um, they produce uh, probably quarterly reports on everything going on digital in the world. And you can have a little bit of a read through that, but um, I'm just gonna go across the bottom icons to point out a few things there. Um, start with what people really need and want, not just what technology can do. So sure, technology is awesome and it's fun and it's great and it's great to get involved with it, but make sure that it's gonna do something for the people that you wanna to talk to and not just tick them off because we really want them to be excited about it rather than, oh my God, they're just blasting another ad at me. Uh, second one there is um, focus on creating kind of mutual value and that means that your organization wins and the customers go, wow, gosh, it's great to work with IT masters. They, they give a bit and they take a bit and we work together. And man, I've got a degree now and they've had a great customer and I think I'll go back and do it again sometime in the future. So that's the mutual value thing and that's such a 21st century way to do things. The minute you start stripping money off people, um, AKA maybe the Banking Royal Commission is highlighted in insurance and banking, people just don't like you anymore and they're not gonna be helpful to you achieving your goals. A uh, big part of social media though these days is making stuff easy to be able to buy and there is a lot of stuff happening across um, Facebook for sure, Twitter maybe to less extent. Uh, people are experimenting in Instagram quite a lot to make you uh, able to buy right there and then. You're hot for the moment, you're standing in front of a location, the piece of content comes up, you can click on it and you can have that product or service ordered and delivered to you right there and then. And um, as a want it now kind of society, then that's working really well for people and people are, are using it, you know, they're adopting it really well, which is great. Last one there is harness digital tools, keep the conversation going. And uh, it's not just a, a transactional relationship anymore. And in marketing, we talk all about the relationship. So social media is an awesome way to continue the relationship with people after they've experienced your product and to use that to develop better products and to get more things happening and um, go back to these people again with more solutions. And IT Masters is very, very good at doing those kind of things rather than just having the big hit, taking the money and see you later. Because once you've done that again, you'll find it very hard to engage people as you move down the track. Um, we're going to look at things also through a lens of what uh, marketers would call paid, earned and owned. And the couple of things I like about that, which help us understand why we might do certain activities in the social media and the digital space particularly, is because when you pay to buy some content or buy an ad, you have total control over that. Yes, you're gonna spend some money, but you have control about what you're gonna say, when it's gonna happen and do those things. The downside to paid stuff is consumers usually know that you're paying to be in that space right now. It might even have a little note under it saying promoted, and they're a little skeptical about that. So two things which are very powerful in this model is owned. When you own something, then you control it internally. You can talk about the level of customer service. You can talk about we will post every morning at eight, eight o'clock when the, when the tram goes past Flindustration. We will um, treat people this way. We will use this language. You have all that within your gambit and there's no excuses for not doing it. So that's powerful and that's good. If you're a startup, you've got a great product, then you own that and you can take that to the people through the mechanisms you want and portray it like you would like as well. The last one on this list is earned and people like talking about earned because earned is when I guess customers pay you back because they like your content, they share your content, they um, click on your content, they buy your content and that is essentially an outcome of doing great work with your owned or your paid media and where you can earn stuff for essentially low amounts of money or no money at all, then it's a win-win for everybody. You can do great contact, customers love doing it and make that happen. And um, one of those great examples we'll just touch on quickly tonight is Air New Zealand. If anybody's checked out their latest safety video, we'll have a quick look at some of the stats on that as it comes up. So part of um, what we bring into you tonight and part of the resources that we've made available online is a digital marketing plan template, which we used in 2015 for the digital planning course. And within that template, there's a couple of things which I just wanted to point to um, before I get to the, the worksheets. 
if you're going to do a digital marketing plan for your organization, then you just need to understand the different things that are happening in that space first up. And so we definitely would recommend, I'm just going through to that slide now, a SWOT analysis. A couple of things about SWOT analysis is strengths and weaknesses are things that, again, are internal to your business, however small it is or however large it is, but you can control them. So you can hire and fire, recruit, rebrand, all of those things. And you've got strengths, you want to leverage them with your customers. And when you've got weaknesses, you need to minimize their impact with customers for sure. Second part of that is opportunities and threats. And opportunities for me are always outside the organization. You don't have total control over them and they're usually customer-based because because you want to make a sale, sell some products, move some products, uh, get people enrolled in courses, etc. And um, so you have to work with those opportunities. And at the end of the day, you're trying to mesh your strengths with the opportunities that you see present out there. And the last one there is threats. And these are also from outside your organization and they're uncontrollable. So you need to be able to work with them. So if you have a high risk social media strategy and uh, something might happen in the ambient environment, um, uh, let's uh, say, for example, the Lion Airline Company in Indonesia had a, an accident the other week, then, uh, and I'm not sure, maybe Tim will tell us some more about this later, but both um, Virgin and Qantas would pull their social media sort of heads in during that period of time because that would be how to reduce the threat of getting branded as unreliable airlines, which there was a lot of social media noise about that. Just moving forward, that's um, out of the swap. We're going to pick up a few different things that our marketing, our digital marketing plan can address. Moving forward yet again, we want to set some uh, objectives for our target markets. And I'm really, really big on knowing exactly who your customer is. And sometimes it's, it's better to tell who your customer is by telling us who is not your customer. And uh, probably tonight, if there was somebody online who had a doctor of um, applied social media, for example, a very advanced academic qualification, I would say this course is not for them. It's likely they're in front of the game on us on that front as well. So knowing it's not for them, we want to make sure that we don't spend any time or effort reaching out to communicate to them. On the flip side to that, we would like to know people who want to know more in this space and we could reach out and reach them. So they might be Australian based. Um, we did a particular promotion through an umbrella that which is a particular customer profile. And we'll probably talk more about that in coming weeks as well. I also like goals for target markets. And um, you would want a target market to do these particular activities. And in the social media front, it might be to, first of all, see, then they might like, uh, we might like them to share, we might want them to click on. And that's how we sort of set goals that can be measurable and that we can use to decide if our campaigns are both working or not working so much. We touched on the paid earned and earn one. And then we have a selection of kind of tools and things that we can think about in the digital strategy space. And I'm going to just move on to my sheet here. Now, each night over the next three weeks or so, you should be able to fill in one of these sheets, which is social media tools, the worksheets. Uh, we're going to put in what's the tool at the top, which tool we're using tonight. We're talking about Twitter. I've got an example on the next slide for you to have a look at. What are the benefits and synergies for this tool with our strategy? And if it's got none, don't do it. Stay away from it. Stay out of the road. As sexy as it might be, stay away from it. Who is the target market we're going to reach with that? And what is our goal for that target market? So we would like to convert people from uh, Twitter posts involving uh, short videos to go to our website to view a particular new product or service. So we'd set a goal for that particularly. And our strategy with that tool is likely to include things like text, image, videos, videos hashtagging, uh, posting, liking, sharing, commenting, et cetera. And then I'm really big on when you do these posts, what's the timing of these things to make the most of the ambient environment to make sure that your, your post hits the mark at the right time with the right topic for the people that you want to talk to. And then the next point down there is how are we going to integrate that with other properties we're using? Maybe we're doing some outdoor. We've got our website, for example, and we might have our sales guys on the, on the phones calling people also. And then what tools are we going to use to measure that? And Tim is definitely going to talk about that in a little while. Uh, this is an example which I put together. I'm not going to go through it now, uh, but it gives you some ideas about what sort of language you might use in this space. Um, I'm, I'm very aware of, of the language thing, particularly in the Twitter space. And so I've put here as an example that we'd use very positive, gender neutral, product focused and event linked language. So that might be around uh, midterm elections in the US last week, for example. Uh, certainly, um, we're not going to say anything that's going to get us any gender um, 
uh, Me Too, uh, backlash or kickbacks or anything like that. So we're going to be very conscious of those. And we'll talk more about what goes into this as we um, get into the tool as well. But that's an example there for you. The final thing which you'll have a look at in week four is how do you integrate a bunch of tools together? And we'll talk more about that when we get to week four as well. A couple of things that are going on just in the world of digital around us. And uh, in the bottom left-hand corner there, we've got a slide from my 2015 deck. And um, you can see the global population of um, um, internet users was about, of the, sorry, not internet users, of people was about 7.2. And in 2018, in the top right-hand corner, it's grown to 7.6. So there's big population growth. But things we need to know there really, which highlights why this course and many others in this space are so important, is that there's been a billion increase in internet active users. That's just crazy. There has been a 1.3 billion increase in active social media users. There has been a 1.4 billion increase in mobile phone users, smartphone users particularly as well. And the number of active mobile smart accounts has doubled in just three years. So this is why I guess we're here tonight doing this and why it makes so much sense to know what's going on in this space and so you can make a conscious decision about are we in, are we out, and how are we going to make it work for us? That's amazing. Isn't it nuts? And that's just three years, guys. Just three years. It's crazy. That's insane. Um, share of web traffic by device. I don't want to dig into all the slides here completely, but web traffic is mainly on mobile phones now. And um, it's... Uh, it's it's the biggest single device. Other devices' use of internet is fading away slowly. So you can see mobile. So um, that's what makes you, Guy, an even more unique individual, I guess. You're probably using a tablet. Maybe you've still got a notebook or something like that. Many, so many people are using mobiles to get their web-based information. Uh, uh, I can confirm no tablet. Um, <laughs> and I might uh, just uh, jump in here. We've got a few questions. Um, maybe we can have a look at them. Um, cool. right Shayla has asked um, about the, the worksheets. Uh, are there any sort of templates around that you know of? Um, where, where can we find good templates? Cool. There's, a, there's a lots, lots and lots of sources of um, templates. And I think this one's been made available through the Learn IT Masters resources i have i have to say i have to I haven't checked that just yet but um it will be made okay. available was, was that one of the was that one of the links um yes it should be okay should be there for that one and, okay so 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 in your study guides folks for each module there's a bunch of links with um really useful uh, resources and readings and and things like the worksheet um grace is asked is earned different or how is earned different from organic uh, earned and organic are very similar at the end of the day because um, an organic result for say search or something like that is means that people are looking for the content and you've been able to mesh your own property. So your website, your keywords and those things to come up with an organic result, which is the most credible place to be. I guess within earned, it might be more than organic. It might be uh, the way you've tweeted, you've created content specifically to achieve a particular goal. It's you controlling that so that you earn it in the right particular places, but it's very similar to an organic result. Thank you. Uh, is this what we were discussing earlier um, just relating to social media analysis or, or does it extend to, to business and companies overall? No, the SWOT I definitely would look at on a larger, more organizational basis because there might be, um, you know, uh, ways your organization works, which is going to prohibit using technology in the online space, or there might be security issues around it. So you need to know about that. You can't sort of do a, a, um, a digital or a social media plan in isolation of the broader organization and certainly the broader customer environment where customers might choose to not, in, not engage in this platform. And as much as there is many, many people using social media platforms, there is still substantial number of people who do not want to use social media platforms. And if we want to communicate to them, we have to reach them some other way. And they're still viable customers. Okay, and I think the last one for now, um, I think it's the first time I've ever said this, question from Facebook, uh, any content for the public sector or mostly private tonight? And, and indeed for the rest, course, rest of the course. Does this extend to, to both? 
Absolutely. Um, uh, myself, I uh, worked in the commercial sector and still continue to do that as a consultant, but uh, I hold a position as a director on a not-for-profit disability organisation. And uh, as they've moved into the NDIS in Australia, particularly, they've used a lot of, um, you know, contemporary commercial marketing strategies to, to communicate to customers. And also in the government sector and you know, an awesome example in New South Wales, which I'm so surprised to say is an awesome example, is um, Service New South Wales, which used to be the, um, what's well, the RMS now, and it used to be the RTA, which was a, a really difficult organisation to work with. But Service New South Wales, which does motor vehicle registry and stuff like that, they're awesome. They do stuff and they're using modern techniques about helping customers with particular issues that they have. So they've very carefully mapped out customer journey. They communicate to you in a timely fashion. They uh, target their communications around particular issues that are going on. And if you happen to be face to face with them, then they do a really ex excellent job to understand what you need, how to do it, how to do it in the fastest possible way. So uh, from my point of view, um, I, I don't like silos around industries particularly, and there's a massive amount to be looked at, uh, to be learnt from working with people in different uh, industry sectors. So for me, this is for, for all sorts of people. Beauty, thanks for that. We've got a few more questions filing in, but we'll hold those over until a little bit later. Excellent, let's do that. Uh, this is just a quick snippet here. There's been a massive rise in the way people use smartphones and using video is one of those things. So, um, um, and these are 18 to 34 year olds, so you're younger people are, at the end of the day, but uh, watching a video and then particularly live TV because we had free to air used to come through your house there'd be a box in one room you'd watch it people are just doing catch up TV they're watching um, events and etc on their smartphones and it's highlighted the way the, the audience is moving and then the second part of that is about messaging which I'll talk about in a second um, this is one I just wanted to point you to and, and somebody uh, even guy you might have a look uh, if you just search Air New Zealand on YouTube, uh, they've just launched a new safety video and they did that on the afternoon of the 5th of November, which is uh, a few days ago now, but uh, not that long. I happened to catch it at about 135,000 views and um, I had a look again on the 8th, which was last Thursday, I think, and it had risen to 1.4 million views. And so... Air New Zealand does two things. One, they use an awful lot of content and B, they run a really strong social strategy. And part of that is um, YouTube, part of that is hashtagging, and uh, part of that is, is the, as I mentioned, is the content that they produce. And so while this isn't quite, well, I guess for a, for a small airline on a the, on the world scale, it's a viral piece because when I looked earlier tonight, it was about 1.98 million. Uh, so just about to crack 2 million views. And this is an airline safety briefing. Like who ever could get people to engage in that kind of content? So it's just a good example of social strategy coming to the forefront and Air New Zealand is probably a leader in this particular space. Uh, a few more stats for us to have a look at here. Um, total number of active social media users globally, 3.3 billion. There is no bigger you know, marketplaces. And we know that, and we'll talk about Facebook in a little while, you know, Facebook takes up a huge amount of that. So these are massive marketplaces. So it says that social media has a lot of potential. You know, you, you cannot reach that through any kind of bricks and mortar. You cannot meet, reach that through probably a single website. So social media is a, is a massive um, uh, impact in the world and growing, which is the important part about that slide particularly. Another one, uh, some slides about where social media users are existing. And so Oceana, particularly around Australia, we're, we're pretty quick and high adopters of that. So it's great to have good conversations into an Australian marketplace. Um, in uh, Eastern Asia there, for example, very, very high adoption. It won't be of Facebook, particularly in that part of the world, but it might be of WeChat. There's a bunch of other tools that are being used in different parts of the world for different things. So again, we're going to try and decode what they are and have a look and see how you might different use different tools to get to different get different outcomes i like this one i saw it so i thought i'd better chuck it in too this is where social media content becomes powerful for a brand like kfc um, someone has tweeted and now there'd have to be a question about whether this is a you know a setup or not but dear kfc no one likes your fries you're sincerely the entire world and social media in this way has become a, you know, a product design feedback mechanism for KFC. And if even a few people go, man, your fries suck, we don't like them, 
then KFC has got to have a look at that and go, well, is this true or not? Let's go and find out some more information about what people think about our fries. And clearly here, they've done the research. They found out that people are less than happy with their fries overall. They might like their chicken, but the fries aren't really doing it for them. And so new fries coming soon. And they've taken a piece of authentic content, which in theory someone has tweeted. It's probably got a lot of likes, maybe it got a lot of shares as well. And people would recognize that when they see the billboard and the sidewalks of London here. And they go, oh, so social media led us to getting new fries. That's awesome. Clearly, they're going to use social media now to launch their new fries along with their outdoor campaign when that comes along as well. Uh, who are the big players in the social um, world? Uh, no surprises there that Facebook's at the top of the lead list, but there's some uh, issues around Facebook, which we'll discuss in a second. The second one there is YouTube. And this is what uh, makes YouTube and Google uh, some people call uh, YouTube a social platform um, because people are sharing, collaborating, talking, liking, disliking, etc. So YouTube is massive, but when in conjunction with Google, Google's the biggest um, search platform in the world, and then YouTube is the second biggest search platform in the world. So they're a massively important part. It's owned by Google, so that's why um, Google Analytics is so important to you, and knowing about where your stuff's going in that space is really important. Uh, we can see the growth of WhatsApp, but WhatsApp is a messenger application. You'll notice the red ones are messenger applications. So if we looked at this chart, and I didn't have it from three years ago, but messenger applications were small fry on the scale of things. But now the top of the top five um, tools that are out there, we've got three of them being messenger applications. So there's been a swing and a change in the way people are communicating and sharing things. And messenger applications uh, have a long way to go and have a, a lot for businesses to, to be able to get involved in them in a very sort of proactive selling way. But people are working on that and there's stuff we'll talk about in that space as well. Uh, a bit of a quote here from um, uh, one of my sources, which will be at the back of this deck as well. So meanwhile, Facebook continues its drastic decline. So a couple of things going on with Facebook is one that teens are shedding Facebook very quickly. And um, when it says that only 36% of teens surveyed using Facebook once per month and down 45%, then you know something's going on in that space. Because once per month, nothing. Facebook is a, is a daily, if not hourly kind of um, habit, I suppose, to form there as well. And um, so certain groups are moving away from certain platforms. And again, we're going to try and uncover what's out there. And when you're putting together your social media strat strategy, you're going to have to have a look at who's there, can you reach the people you need to through that um, so that you can get your message across to the, the places you want to be as well. Part of the, um, the change to uh, Facebook is that Snapchat has risen pretty significantly. Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, is also on the rise again, but um, uh, for different reasons, for, for because of its kind of graphic capability, et cetera. Its stories have, have lifted it up the ranks as well. And I'm sure Amy's going to talk more about that in, in coming weeks as we get, get along there as well. Uh, the link to that particular article is right on the bottom of that slide. Uh, message apps, this is growth around the, the world and you can see certain parts of the world are absolutely loving WhatsApp. And uh, part of that could be to do with uh, restrictions on using other social media tools, for example, China. Uh, they're using WeChat in that space as well. That's because Facebook particularly is banned in that uh, geographic area. And a um, bit of stuff for Australia. Most of the population uses the internet, 88%, fairly good there too. 17 million or nearly 70% of the population is active in social media. Um, unique mobile users, and there's actually more mobile phones than there is people in Australia, but unique users is 19 million. So if you look at the stat between social medias and mobile, then you've got a lot of stuff going on. You've got a lot of people to talk to in, uh, through the use of your mobile strategy. Some of the things, um, I need to get cracking because I've probably got a bit too much stuff here. Uh, social in Australia, social media uh, user growth in Australia has been about 6% over the last 12 months or so. Um, uh, that's the number of users that have been involved in it as well. Mobile is growing faster than actual numbers of users. So that's an interesting, mobile is the way to do social media these days as well. Um, overall growth of the rest of the internet is just at 3%. So social and mobile are outgrowing all other parts of internet use as well. Uh, There's the one for Guy, 87% of Australians do own smartphones at the moment. And uh, mobile traffic is up 11% for mobiles. And in fact, every other source, so tablets, 
game platforms and uh, PCs, notebooks is, are all in decline. Average daily social media use is around one hour 40, which is massive. And I definitely spent my hour 40 today, but I'm hoping I won't have to do that much tomorrow. And um, Australians, as probably triggered by the Cambridge Analytica and the more recent um, API um, security scam with Facebook, are worried about data privacy and security, but uh, largely optimistic about doing things in the digital space. Though I noticed also today in another article I read that uh, about 1.5 million Australians have already unsubscribed from the new automatically to be created health record. So data privacy and security issues are big for Australians. And so you need to think about that when you're collecting their details and certainly using their details in any kind of space. Um, most active uh, social media platforms in Australia, uh, Facebook 70%, we probably knew that that was going to be the case too, but we know that it's shrinking. They're probably maintaining a lot of their user base through Messenger as it would be at the moment. Instagram's grown there, big, strong, 34% uh, of the, the active social media population going really well. And uh, then we've got tools like Twitter, which we're going to have a look at tonight. Um, LinkedIn, which have got very kind of specific audience. Pinterest is not on that list. It's got a very specific audience as well. And poor old Google Plus, which I do love uh, for all sorts of different reasons, is going to get the chop. Um, they've had a data breach in the last six months or so, and I believe Google's going to shut it down. So you can say goodbye to that one. Save your photos off there if you did have it, uh, have anything stored up there as well. And um, this is an important one for us as well. So where is your attention most likely to be grabbed first? And people for many years have been talking about the downfall of television, but from an advertising perspective, um, any Australian consumer is likely to be confronted by a TV ad before they see anything else. Uh, good news is though that online advertising is the second most powerful thing, but this is why people are using television in conjunction with uh, online media. And I guess the block recent TV show would be one example about how that integration has gone really well and how they're making that work for them. And, um, and all sorts of TV shows are doing stuff to integrate social media particularly and other digital properties. And uh, lucky last here is, um, and this comes back to our sort of uh, paid and owned and owned things, digital choices, that um, which digital channels perform best for your content. This is from Altimeter, a uh, company website or blog. And one of the things about that which people like and can trust and can measure, which is why this is at the top of that list, is their own company website using probably Google Analytics, etc. Uh, Facebook has also got Great analytics and you can learn a lot and do that. And Beth Powell is going to talk about that in a couple of weeks also. And then mobile apps, again, because you own a mobile app, it's got your content, it uh, works the way you say it does and all those sort of things. As you get down the list, as you understand less, as um, um, probably they're less common, then they're less adopted in media as well. But still really important for reaching certain target audiences. <laughs> I think I covered off most of the points on that slide and I'd really like to get to our, our Twitter bit. A um, couple of things there. Social is no longer a fad. Business is looking as a part of their business purpose and this applies to not-for-profit, commercial, government, etc., to lower costs and social media is an awesome way to lower costs. Telstra's been working in Twitter particularly for a long time and they can respond faster using bots, etc., to Twitter, people making complaints, wanting to move house, a range of things. So lowering costs is a real issue for organizations in the current tough environment. Uh, we're looking to increase revenue as well so you can reach very large audiences via social media tools as well. Um, mitigating risks which is interesting. So I guess you have a bit more of a broader platform approach might be the risk mitigation point and then attracting talent. So LinkedIn is probably the core thing that Australians and Americans are using for attracting talent. But um, certainly if you're a follower of um, um, uh, some of the big retail outlets, uh, the iconic, that's a good example. They are definitely using uh, social media channels to attract the right people to their digital platform organizations. So social, social, panel, uh, social channels provide new opportunities for broadcasting where TV would have been really, or radio might've been the only ones earlier. You know, you can reach very large, broad audiences via these mechanisms. They also provide targeted, targetable small spheres of influence. So um, within 
within Instagram, for example, there's groups of motorcycle lovers, there's groups of fashionistas, there's groups of people who love education. And so we can reach into those very, you know, core groups of people with a social media strategy and have more of a one-on-one narrow cast style conversation. Some people have gone to these spheres because of they've lost faith in traditional media with, um, you know, the sun in the UK, um, uh, you know, Trump's war on uh, news being fake news, those kind of things have driven people to find other places to get new information. And that's a really good way to, to segue into, into the Twitter conversation as well. So for Twitter, which is our social media platform tonight, a um, couple of things about it, and this is, these are global stats for it. Uh, Twitter users are likely to be global citizens as well. They're likely to be you know, well-traveled. They know a bit about the world. They um, uh, may be scattered and located all over the world. Millennials are currently the, the largest group at 22%, but um, as you get up in age groups, they get smaller, but uh, other age groups, Gen Xs and Gen Ys are uh, very well re- represented on this platform. They are more likely to be educated than people who use different platforms or they, um, I guess, wear their education on there as a badge if you're a Twitter user. And we certainly see that in political services. If you follow the um, hashtag OSPOL, then there's a lot of stuff goes on around, you know, education and kind of um, more informed conversations maybe. Uh, They are likely to have above average income. So the socioeconomics of a Twitter, of the average Twitter user is likely to be better than some other tools. They are likely to be urban, though there is quite a lot of regional people in that space, but uh, certainly my followers do reflect an urban split as well. And an equal split between gender at the moment, but you'll find on different uh, postings, there'll be a strong female or male skews around those sort of things. This is the point I love most about the Twitter thing is that people want to find, they want to discover something new and interesting. And I think if you reflect on that, on anything that you tweet, if it doesn't give you something new or interesting, a piece of news, something they didn't know, uh, a picture they didn't know about, etc., then it's a, it's a bit of a loss to you to do that because that is the need that's being met by Twitter. And people are looking for it for breaking news. They're looking for the extraordinary incident. They're looking for strange things. And um, we'll show you a few tweets and stuff on that space later. They actively search within Twitter as well. So they're searching hashtags, they're searching people, they're searching events and moments. And, um, and they seek breaking news, as I mentioned also. Uh, some business opportunities around Twitter. Um, interestingly, uh, Twitter supporters like small businesses. So they like people who are having a go. And I guess they're looking for new startups, ideas, tech companies, you know, someone making new thongs, whatever it might be in the Twitter space. And so they're likely, and um, Twitter has data on them, supporting like-minded companies who, who uh, have that ethic, which is great. It's a pretty cool thing for small businesses. Uh, it can be a fast customer service tool as been illustrated by a number of people. And I had a little run in with uh, what if a few weeks ago. And while I could hardly get them on the phone, I did get a response on Twitter quite quickly. Uh, use of live streaming as we're doing on Facebook tonight is increasing also. Uh, cost per engagement is decreasing and engagement in material is increasing, especially around video. And um, of all the videos served on Twitter, um, 93% of it's served on mobile. So again, another reason why you need to have that smartphone integration if you want to use this platform to the max. Uh, strangely, Twitter users don't see video ads as intrusive. So that'll be a combination of both production, length of time they run, and a number of other things. And I'm sure they're not all non-intrusive, but largely they don't see them as intrusive, which is really important because advertising on your TV set is essentially very intrusive. Uh, Video gets six times more retweets than photos and GIFs or animations get two times more retweets than photos. And what that's also telling me is that if you do not attach at least a photo to your tweet, then its ability to get retweeted is going to be extremely low. Um, Users like promoted accounts. So that the concept of spending some money to promote your account up the top of the list, we'll see one in a second, is actually valuable to Twitter users. So they, you know, they're getting advertised at, but they go, oh, wow, that's a new product that I like. I'm going to find out about that. And uh, so they actually like that in the space. So that's a powerful thing as well. And uh, Twitter has research showing that um, Twitter posts, videos, and um, promotions can influence buying decisions in a range of categories from automotive through to health insurance. So a lot of stuff going on for Twitter as a social media tool to make that happen. 
A little bit of stuff about their advertising audience. I think we've touched on those, so I'm just going to keep moving through that slide. Uh, part of the, the global advertising audience, so this is where you can see the, the male-female split coming on a little bit and um, um, the reach there. So probably a big audience in the 18 to 49 year old category as well, though a little bit above that, very little underneath it for a range of reasons. But um, again, if you need to, to reach, you know, um, uh, decision makers in families of uh, uh, dual income households with 2.4 kids, then probably Twitter is a vehicle that you could use that if you've got a new and exciting newsworthy piece of product. Excellent. Um, we're going to dive into the live screen in a second. And uh, this is just a snapshot of my home screen from earlier this morning. And um, Twitter gives you some stats straight off the, the bat. So I just thought I'd point to a couple of things here first that, um, and my engagements are actually quite low. So we're going to work on those over the next few weeks or so. So my top mention here in seven engagements and coincidentally it was an IT masters tweet. So that's a pretty cool thing. And uh, one of the reasons why this one here has earned so many engagements is it includes a number of different people. So Alicia, Amy and Beth have both been tagged on that and myself, and then I've liked it and um, retweeted it. So that's part of that. Um, my top tweet happened yesterday morning, um, which earned 1,100 impressions within about an hour and a half or so, which was pretty fast. And this is the, the guys I was with yesterday. So we've got a picture of three women. They're out doing a cool thing around um, a particular regional location and talking about STEM, which reports quite well on Twitter as well. And uh, got, a, got a bit of likes, but got a, a quite a lot of impressions very, very quickly. Over on the right side of the screen there, you can see my November summary as to date, as of this morning, I've done 33 tweets. I've had 286 profile visits, which is probably a result of lots of people signing up for this course and maybe going, who the hell's this Andrew guy? Um, total tweet impressions is 8,700 and uh, just a few of those have been paid for. Most of them are organic. And we'll get into that a little bit later as well. And I've collected... Um, out of 286 profile visits, I've collected just eight new followers. So I probably need to improve my performance on that one. So um, that's, that's what's going on in that space. And that's part of the dashboard that you can see for every Twitter user and once you've got some material out there to make that happen. A um, couple of things here. This is just a breakdown of uh, using a tool called Tweets Map. And uh, this is where my followers sit on a global basis. So there's a bit of a um, European influence there, but nearly 41% of my followers come out of Australia. And I can tell you that they come, they fall between Brisbane, Sydney and, and Melbourne and a few places in between. But again, if I wanted to reach people in Europe, it's possible I could do it through my channel or there might be better ways to do that. Certainly if I wanted to promote my consulting services into Sydney and Melbourne, that'd probably be an easier feat for me to, to come up with as well. Uh, this is just the split here between the organic and the promoted paid splits from uh, some stuff that's going on. So I've been spending a little bit of money on Twitter just this last week or so. And I promoted this tweet here, which is the over five weeks from November 12th. And it was doing all right on its own basis. You can see that, that there's about 248 organic tweets from whatever date that went out. But we've also paid, and I think I've only spent about $20 or so uh, for 112 or so promoted impressions. And out of that, we've got engagements of um, what you see down there. So probably still reasonably poor performance on that front. So you'd like to get lots more retweets of that. And over the next couple of weeks or so, we're going to focus on how do we bring those numbers up as well. Cool. So a couple of things about accounts before we get into the live demo. And uh, Tim will be waiting on the sidelines there. I apologize for running a little bit late there, mate. Um, beware of robots. And um, when we saw robots, I would pick them out as being what appear to be people, but they have very few followers and they've usually got thousands of tweets. Uh, Twitter has a campaign of removing bots or robots from Twitter on a regular basis. Uh, Katy Perry, Perry lost a million users, a million followers, uh, you know, a month or so ago when they had a bit of a clean out. Uh, so if people try to follow you using that, then I'd sort of steer away from those because really you want authentic users because they're the ones you want to communicate as well. Uh, just to get your, your Twitter career underway, if you haven't started as yet, there's a couple of good people to follow. So IT Master CSU, myself, Mazing, Social Status, which is Tim, who's going to speak tonight, and Beth, who's on uh, in a couple of weeks, and Alicia as well. And we'll talk about hashtags a little bit later, but um, use those hashtags down the bottom on any of the material that you're doing for us. 
Oh yeah, this is the authenticity one. These are a couple of scammers that are out there looking to grow their tweets. And old King King Orr's there. He's got a campaign going on about uh, gain a hundred and do all those sort of things. And that's how you do it. But if you're just getting random people and you're getting other bots following you back, then your account's going to have um, less credibility with the users. Um, you know, Google best Google facts. You know, using a Google logo. You know, a dodgy name. Oh, my dog turned 17 today. How many people will say him happy birthday? You know, it's just a scam to get people to like and retweet things. So stay away from tools like that in this space because your followers, those intelligent, higher income earning people will appreciate authenticity rather than um, a lack of that as well. So I'm just going to grab my Twitter screen. Uh, Guy, can you see that? I just want to check. We just changed screens there. Yep, sure can. Excellent. So we're now into my Twitter screen. This is my home screen, which I would log into when I um, arrive. I'm just going to go see new tweets there because there's been stuff going on while I've been yakking away. And um, so just going from the left to the right there, you can see your obviously name. You get to put a profile prick in there. You can put your brand in there if you want to. I'm a little bit squeamish about putting my face up on social media, though it does exist in other places on the internet. But I put quirky signs up or plants or what other things it's friendly certainly i avoid people who don't put a profile pic of any sort up and uh, stay away from that uh, you can see under here the tweets that i've done and since 2009 or so i've done about 2400 tweets i'm following about 3000 people and i have about 1800 people who follow me and uh, so that's you know there's there's lots of people in and around that space there are some people who have tens of thousands of followers and some who have millions as well um Currently at the moment, and I'm just having a little look down the, the list there, nothing there for us, but trending for you. We can pick places in the world where trends are happening. So at the moment, it's set on Australia. And um, there's been something obviously on ABC 730 report. Uh, Paul Keating's had his head up somewhere as well. And they're of interest. And there's been enough people uh, tweeting about those. And we can see the TV show Bride and Prejudice must have started as well, that are tweeting about those to... Uh, allow Twitter to see enough traffic to say, hey, this particular hashtag or this username is trending in this space. Um, Sam Kerr is a soccer player, I think, so she might have done another somersault for us on TV tonight, which would be good. Like the world's best soccer player. Uh, yeah, there you go. And obviously, they've got to go Matildas there as well. So the girls, actually, they might be playing tonight, are we? They might, we might be cutting into people's soccer enjoyment time as well. That's no good. Um, then we're moving into the screen about what's happening. And I could do an update straight into that box up the top there, and I might do one shortly. We'll notice that the last tweet that popped into my feed there is from Alicia. She's talking with us in week four. We can see that IT Masters, which uh, Sophie's on the job there tonight, and Amy, who's also on the, uh, the um, Zoom with us tonight, have liked that. And it's got me tagged in it, so you can see the at. And that means that that person will be alerted to that's going on and um, students at the IT Master CSU with the hashtags any along there being a native platform expert is paramount but remember have a strategy for these so nice real point about how that goes I'm just going to like that because I do like those two people and their commentary on social media is, is worthwhile um, from a personal point of view if you happen to have an action coast coach uh, in your life they will tell you on social media that if you want to get noticed and get profiled then you follow the people that can influence your career you like the material of many people in that space and on the people who can really influence your career you should always comment or share their material so there's a couple of reasons why to, to get into different things within my feed you'll find a lot of stuff about um, regional Australia about education and about marketing particularly so all of those um, 1800 followers or so I do work in that sort of media marketing education space and I'm, I'm quite um, uh, tight about who I allow into that space and get that so that's how I end up with my group of followers it's probably why it's not massive but it's there and uh, I get really great material from them and do that I'm just going to refresh the feed as well there we go. So we've got a bunch of other new things going on there as well that are sort of working in that space. Just going across the page there, we've got who to follow. And these are promoted. You can see the top one there, the Nikkei Asian Review. That's a promoted one. 
you can see that it's been paid to be there at the top. But nature photography and travel vibes, and I'm not sure why they would pop up into my feed, though the girl that I was with in that earlier photo yesterday is a ecologist, and I've liked a few of her things, and it's highly likely that that has brought other ecology type people into my, um, I guess, my atmosphere of, of tweeters and those kind of things to, to make that happen. So um, that's what's going on. Um, there you go, Lawrence, one of our people. Uh, Laz, Laz, is it? You're obviously on, online tonight as well, I would say. So thank you for that. And thanks for making that tweet up and getting it out there with the, with the hashtags on it as well. Uh, right across the top of the page, we've got um, home, we've got moments. If I just click on that for a second, then we're going to see that these are things happening on a global basis, on a global basis. Something's happening in Gaza around an hour ago. Um, the Burke Street car driver guy's got a bit of an issue going on there as well. Scott Morrison's up to something as well. Michelle Guthrie from the ABC. It's kind of like a news channel from the Twitter space. Um, next one is notifications. And I've got about um, 26 of those sitting there. And this is you guys. So thank you again for doing that as well and for including me in your tweets. So Steph, Miles, Purple Pajamas, excellent name, and Matt uh, down there as well. I'm sure you guys are online tonight. So what we're doing here is we're seeing stuff and what happens here, which is just so useful for me, and if I was interested in a brand, a motorbike, or a product or service, then um, it's bringing the information to my dashboard. And for example, Steph's saying that she's loving the social media course. Awesome. Let's bring more social media to Steph. And that's like a really great thing to make that happen. So it, it, in terms of a product development, in terms of a sales cycle, in terms of raising money for your not-for-profit, for gaining awareness of your event or your cause, followers and likers and retweeters bring, bring the love back to you. And then you can use that as a measure to say, hey, man, that last that last graphic I used, that last thing I said, that last controversy I jumped into is actually bringing the, the people back to, to my sort that I need to see as well. So that's, that's all of our stuff. When you click on the mentions button, you're looking to see that there is just um, uh, your name has been actually tagged within it rather than just a, maybe a retweet or a like of something that you want as well. So that's pretty cool. So let's, um, let's just have a quick search of Twitter because we've got a search box up here. Twitter users like to search and you can see a few things that I've been looking on. Let's go to at IT masters. That's the wrong one in fact. So that's not going to be very helpful for me, but I'm going to go to IT master CSU, which is the second one there. Um, and that's one of the downsides to Twitter. You need to make sure you grab the, um, the handle correctly because, you know, just a, a one keystroke and you can be off quite a mile there. So now we're into the IT Masters feed here. We can see what's going on here as well. So Jojo's jumped in there. Um, <laughs> Is struggling with the multitasking thing. So that's excellent. You'll be going there as well. Alicia shared some stuff into that particular feed as well. Uh, some new um, docs. Notice that somebody else though has promoted a tweet and they will have promoted a tweet in here because IT Masters might be in education, for example. They, in fact, based on the ad that's there, digital employee training, I think they've picked up on keywords like applied social media short course. And they're using that to target their advertising into other people's feeds. Um, there goes someone's, well, there you go. So Sophie's onto that. Thank you, Sophie. She snapped a slide from our um, deck tonight and she's posted into the, um, to the feed. And Madeline's um, brain is buzzed, which is an excellent outcome as well. So fantastic as well. Um, no, no spam in here yet. And if we were going really well tonight, we'd get other people jumping in with other products and services because they're able to, um, to um, um, uh, use the fact that there's a lot of action in our feed to bring their products and services in by tagging IT masters or using our hashtags. Let's just go here to the uh, hashtag and have a search for that. I'm just going to go, I get digital first. And I've been using the I get digital one for quite a long time. So a lot of stuff happens and uh, it's got me included in it. So in terms of the top tweets, so on the left-hand side there, we can see the top tweets. IT Masters is dominating the I Get Digital discussion right at this particular moment. Um, then we've got people who have tweeted into this space um, right now. So Damien's been in there, Lauren, Sally, thank you very much there. Um, 
Trend Chaser is um, a promoted tweet again, and they've seen the action and they've moved in there as well. There's Amy, everybody. Hi, Amy. Uh, Gina and Laura. Hi, Laura. How are you going? Laura's from up my neck of the woods as well. And people have jumped in using that hashtag. We can actually go out to um, uh, Google and uh, search that hashtag on Google and it'll come up with a range of sources, including Twitter where that is. So hashtagging is a way to curate chunks of information together and we're going to have more on that as we, we sort of move forward. Now let me just go to, I've got a second screen here which has got some analytics on it just so we can show those and um, we might extend this over the next few weeks or so because I'm probably running out of time there a little bit. So over the last 28 days I've learned 11,100 impressions and you can see that I've actually ramped things up a lot just over the last few days or so. Where you see the little yellow bar, they're a little harder to see there, but certainly on that last one is, they're promoted impressions. And that's because um, I think I kicked off a campaign on Sunday maybe to lift um, my profile particularly for this course and to give us something to report on while we're working through the material. Uh, down the bottom part of this screen here, we can see the tweets that I've made and um, we can see uh, one here, 1300 impressions, which is pretty good. And let me just go down the list here a bit. This one here. So over the five weeks, that one there's two, only 288 impressions, but the engagement rate at 3.5% is quite high for my tweets. There's, I think, another one down here at 4%. Oh, here we go. Uh, this is a different one. Involves the school, though, the McCarthy College one. It's school. It's a picture of some teachers from the school. But... Not much reach, but a really high engagement level with that one. And when you include people in your tweets and pictures and videos, you're likely to up the engagement level as it would be as well. So um, a range of things going on there. And uh, I think we'll spend a little bit more time on those a little bit later on. So I'm just going to duck back out to my slide deck. Should be that one. Should be that one there. Thank you very much. And... Um, uh, Guy might be getting some questions on those, but we'll work to field those and uh, do some little bit more on that later. I'd really like to get Tim involved in things so that he can get his um, social status material out of the road. So to that end, um, Tim's been sitting there quietly and Tim is actually a co-founder of the social analytics platform called Social Status. Um, Tim's been, I met him a couple of weeks ago. He's out there making things happen. He's a young guy doing things in the social media space and he's worked in ad agencies particularly and they had all sorts of problems reporting how social media strategies were going for their clients. And so his motivation for social analytics is um, all about solving a problem in the agency land, but it turns out lots of us can benefit from this particular tool as well. So to that end, Tim, I might hand over to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Andrew. It's a real pleasure to be um, a part of this tonight. Uh, really fascinating stats there about social media. And I guess when uh, looking at all of this stuff, it can be a little bit um, confronting all these, all this, these stats and all this data. And I guess there's two really important inputs uh, that you can use when you're formulating your own um, social strategies. And that is social listening, which is all about um, understanding that and mapping that earned activity. So every mention of your brand, of your service, of your product. Uh, and on the right side, there is social analytics, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight. And that is basically the performance of your own content, uh, whether that's on Twitter, like we've been seeing, or on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. It's all about looking at how uh, successful your posts are going um, as well as the ad side of things. So if you are promoting your ad spend with some, some ad budget, how, uh, how effective is that uh, from a cost perspective? Um, the other thing that you can look at is actually benchmarking your competitors. So if you're looking at your stats, uh, you may be looking at those and wonder, you know, is a particular metric good or bad? That's, that's typically the, the common situation. And a good way to understand whether it is good or bad is to actually benchmark it against your competitor set. So if we just flick over to the next slide there. Thanks, Andrew. Um, this is probably my favorite slide. Now, uh, there's a reason for that, and that is that it has a funnel in it. And I, I really like the funnel because it's a very familiar device when we're talking about um, marketing. It's been around for about 60 years. 
And the concept of it is that, you know, um, you engage a lot of people at the top of the funnel and as you move them down the funnel, they get more interested in your business, in your product, in your brand, uh, and they may actually convert. They might buy something or may fill out a form or, or visit your website and um, actually take that action that you want them to take. On the uh, left and right sides, you can see the various metrics that are relevant at each part of that funnel from unique people reached and the organic reach rate, which is essentially the percentage of people that you reach without paying, all the way down to actual conversion. And I think what's interesting about this slide is that um, when you're embarking on your social media marketing, it's all about trying to pinpoint at what part of the funnel you want social media to work for you best. Um, if you want each parts of those of that funnel to work for your for your business, then that's fine. Um, but if you want to hone in on just one aspect, um, then that's really going to inform what you do from a content and from an advertising perspective. Um, so let's have a look at these metrics. Um, keep in mind the, the numbers on the right side there. So everything from all, all of the rates, the organic reach rate, engagement rate, growth rate, click-through rate and conversion rate. Let's look at that on the next slide. And so here we have the calculations for each of those rates. Now, um, keep in mind, you can download this, uh, obviously, from um, CSU Online, uh, but these are the actual calculations of each of those rates. So, for example, uh, if we look at that top one there, the organic reach rate, if you've got, let's just kind of keep it simple, if you've got, you know, 100 or let's just say 1,000 um, Facebook fans and you do a post and that reaches, you know, um, 10 of them, then all you need to do is go 10 divided by 1,000, multiply it by 100, and you get an organic reach rate for that post. Now, that's quite uh, a laborious task to, to do all of these calculations yourself, um, and that's why you would rely on a social analytics uh, tool to, to do that for you. But it's really important to understand uh, the calculations behind these and what actually constitutes each of these rates. The one other thing I'll say is that the, the three there in the middle, which are shaded gray, these ones you can benchmark against your competitors. Uh, whereas the, the two, uh, the organic reach rate and the conversion rate, unfortunately you cannot, uh, just because these are, these are private stats and so you won't be able to see those for your competitors. Um, but of course you can benchmark all of these and I would recommend to do this uh, over time and, and generally monthly is the, the reporting cadence that this most marketers use. Um, so let's uh, flick over to the next slide. Yeah. All right. Um, social reporting is where uh, analytics um, comes to life in a final report, which you'd probably hand over to your boss or your client or, or your stakeholder group. And you can report on all of these kinds of things. That's uh, profile analytics, which is the, the pages and the profiles that you manage and that you own um, to the ads there on the right, ad accounts, be that a Facebook ad account, um, competitors, and that's across Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and influencers. And I've been seeing a few comments there uh, in the chat about um, the importance of influencer marketing. And that's uh, a really good point, especially in, in 2018, is you can report on what the engagement rate is for the various influences that you work with or indeed the influences of say competitors or, or other, other profiles. And on the next slide, thanks Andrew, uh, is actually a sign up link. So we, um, we've created a, a, an extended trial um, which will cover the length of the IT Masters course. So you will have to um, sign up on this special URL, which is itmasters.socialstatus.io slash sign up. Um, and that will actually extend your trial out to five weeks so that at least you'll be able to, you know, utilize these analytics and um, have a look at the data essentially uh, for your own accounts. And I'll jump in now to give you a bit of a, a, a quick overview of what the platform can do. Um, but make sure that if you do sign up that you use that link because then you'll get the longer trial rather than just the 14 day trial. Uh, so what I'll do now actually is um, share my screen. 
And let's actually, uh, yeah, that's it. All right. And here we are. So we're now looking at um, social status. And as you can see, um, we're in the profile analytics uh, section. And uh, what we've done here is we've actually added the accounts of IT masters. So that's the Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. Uh, so we're looking at this in a kind of private metrics view and you'll be able to do this for, of course, the pages that you have admin, but let's just have a look. Um, this is the dashboard here, but let's just have a look at some of the content because I think that's probably going to be the most interesting. Um, and that's loading up here. So as you can see, these are all of the, um, oh, this is a bit inception like we can actually see a live uh, post of me actually doing this screencast. That's really interesting, isn't it? Um, but it's really engaging. So as you can see there, that 3.98% engagement rate is actually the highest engaged post that IT Masters has posted in the last 30 days. And you know that engagement rate calculation um, back on that slide uh, that we saw before. Now, um, this is really interesting because over time you can see everything that IT Masters has posted and the corresponding engagement rate. Um, Andrew made a good point before about, you know, um, virality and, and getting people, you know, commenting and sharing and indeed you can sort this feed in another way, like, for example, looking at, you know, what, what content was the most shared um, and that can be really interesting to identify where that virality is uh, and really get kind of pinpoint what are the things that you've done in the past that have worked really well versus perhaps the things that you've done that haven't worked very well. So you can really learn um, when you look at this view, like what is what has historically done well and what hasn't done so well. Um, another interesting um, thing to note is that organic reach rate. So back on the funnel, right at the top of the funnel, I, I mentioned the organic reach rate. And for IT Masters um, Facebook account, it's 10.47%. So what I think would be really interesting for each of your social profiles and, and um, accounts that you admin is to have a look at what that organic reach rate is, because if it's very low, then you're not really reaching, like if it's down in the 1% or, or less, then you're not reaching a lot of people when you post. Um, or if it's really high, then that's fantastic. And that's something to really, um, you know, celebrate with your, with your stakeholders. Um, and keep in mind that, you know, all of these calculations, they can be applied to all the social channels. So if we really, if we just quickly uh, flick over to another social channel, um, to Instagram. Um, ah, actually, because this Instagram is uh, profile only has a few followers, the um, impression data actually hasn't made it yet um, into this account. But let's actually look at another part of the funnel, which is engagement. So that's the second layer of that funnel. And you can see here, for example, um, you know how many reactions, likes, comments, um, this particular account, the IT Masters Instagram account has, has generated um, and how that compares to Facebook. So I think, you know, when you look at channel versus channel, this can be a really interesting way to look at uh, what channels should be, you know, spending most of your time in. Indeed for um, IT Masters, it's, it's Facebook at the moment that seems to be getting uh, the, the bulk of the interactions. Um, and another good way to kind of qualify that is from an ads perspective. So here we we can see that um, uh, IT Masters connected their ad account. And of course, you'll only be able to see uh, this for the ad accounts that, that you connect to the platform. But just as an example, you can see here that um, IT Masters has promoted some posts with a link click objective. And you know they've spent $41 and that's generated 25 clicks. Um, and that's uh, resulted in a $1.66 cost per click. And I think that that's really interesting because then you can start to look at, you know, how does that cost per click compare to AdWords or compare to display advertising or any other digital marketing that, that you might be doing? It's a really good way to benchmark um, how does Facebook or how does social media work from a cost perspective? And you can also see some other metrics around, you know, the reach, of that campaign, six and a half thousand people reached, um, seven and a half thousand impressions. Not bad for forty-one dollars, is it? Um, and you can actually see these were the two posts that were promoted that generated that that traffic. So, so Tim, how does that 
rate compared to other firms? Is there, where, as Nicole's asked, where can we get good targets to benchmark the results of our social uh, posting? Yeah. Now, from an ads side of things, this this cost metric is is um, not possible to benchmark um, with public data, just because it isn't it isn't actually a a public metric. But what you can benchmark is more of those uh, profile metrics that we were looking at before, like the engagement, for example, uh, the growth. Um, that's another interesting thing that you can benchmark is the growth of of certain profiles. Um, and in answering that question around what is a good engagement rate or what is a good growth rate, so here's the growth for IP Masters, really starting to, to amp up there for, for Facebook in the last few days. What you do need to do is curate your competitor group um, yourself. So add in those pages and profiles that I guess you would compete with. And I know that there's a few of you um, in, in uh, the webinar tonight from government. And although the government sector may not have competitors per se, it's all about adding those profiles that speak to the same kinds of audiences that you do. And that's really the best way to benchmark. So let's just have a real quick look at that now. Um, over on this screen here, I've created a benchmarking group um, over in the competitors area. And you know, Andrew mentioned before, Air New Zealand, I've just added these profiles in. So obviously I don't admin any of these pages, but this is all working on public data. So you can see what this engagement rate looks like for each of these brands in the last 30 days and their resulting interactions, huge amount of interactions there. Um, but actually when we have a look at the content, this is where it kind of comes to life because in answering that question around what's a good engagement rate, um, when this uh, feed loads here, you'll see that the highest engaged post had an engagement rate of 0.44%. Now that's fantastic in this group, but in another competitive, another competitive group that might be a really low engagement. So it's really about um, adding those profiles that that make the most sense from a benchmarking group for your brand. There's that um, in New Zealand safety video that, that Andrew mentioned as well. So on, on Facebook, um, nearly 600,000 views on the actual Facebook video, pretty amazing. Um, so look, I think, you know, to, to summarize this, since, it's, since we're nearly at time, I think it's really important to kind of get across these metrics because you can't improve what you're doing unless you measure this stuff. Um, but do um, keep in mind that uh, this, um, the trial for, for social status, is, the extended trial is only available through that IT Masters link. So do remember to use that link. Um, otherwise, you'll only get the shorter trial. But yeah, happy to answer any more questions if there are some. Yeah, there is one more. Um, Leroy's asked, after analyzing on the social status, is there a digital strategy that the tool would recommend to deal with a larger company that is advertising and disrupting a product that you are advertising? Mm. Oh, that's a great question. And I think there's quite a few ways to look at that. I how I would do, do that is actually bring it back to the funnel. So w with regards to, you know, taking all of this data in and then, and then deciding on, you know, what what optimizations you can make. I'd ask the questioner of your stakeholders, uh, at what, what metrics on that funnel are, are most important? Is, is reach, you know, is, is total people reach gonna make, make the boss really happy about that? Or is it all about driving traffic to the website? Or is it about selling something or converting users? Or is it about building the community? So in each of those, in each of those stages of the funnel, um, you can pinpoint where your metrics are and how they compare, I guess. Um, then look at the kinds of content and the brands that are doing well um, against those particular metrics and emulate those, those same kinds of success factors, whether that be the content or uh, the, the channel or the copy or um, this is where it can get a little bit kind of um, more on the creative side, but that's, I guess, how I would approach that. Beauty, thank you so much for that. Um, Andrew, if you want to share your screen again, we'll get back into the slideshow. Um, and if you have any comments or, or questions for, for Tim yourself. Uh, can you hear me again, Guy? Got you now. 
Gotcha. Excellent indeed. Thank you very much for that. I'm going to share them up on that one. Um, fantastic material. Thank you, Tim, for that. And um, I managed between talking and moving headsets around and we did a little bit of live Twitter there using uh, Twitter's uh, Periscope app. So there's been a bit of chat about that online too. And I see the Facebook feeds going really well and people dropping in and out of that. So I guess it's, it's kind of interesting. We've been able to demonstrate what a lot of things are doing and um, in a trap to myself, I've prepared way too much content and uh, we'll have to pick that up over coming weeks, which we will do. And we've got more grace, great guest speakers like Tim coming along um, during coming weeks of which, first of all, which you will have seen online tonight and tweeting about uh, the cats of Twitter, I see, um, uh, Amy Whitfield there. So I just wanted to finish on this slide and then I'll hand you back to Guy who can fire some more questions at us. Uh, Seth Godden's one of the guys who I follow a lot. He's a, he's a crazy marketer. And the thing about him is he wants people to ship it. And I think it's a thing and it's our final slide which talks about being able to, you know, just go and do it, make something happen. Because if nobody makes something happens, if you don't ship it, then nothing happens at all. So in the social media world, you've kind of got to try some things and do some things. And I thought this was interesting here. Uh, Mona Lisa doesn't have a, um, a, a Twitter account. I mean, there's probably some fake ones there, but she hasn't posted, but she's massive on social media. But what it is, it's about you having a product or a service or an offer for consumers and making that speak for you and then using channels like Twitter, like Instagram, like Snapchat to speak to your audiences. And I think if you think about it like that, that you, you're taking your your authenticity, your product, your service, you're taking it to the market via these channels, then you can do awesome work with it. And they, they're great ways for small businesses, particularly to reach out to audiences they could never have afforded to reach in the past. So I think I'd like to fit on that. You can have a read of that particular slide there. And I'm just going to go to the next slide when I click on the right page there and um, hand you back to Guy who can fire some questions or answer some questions and, and maybe Tim and I will try our best to answer them. I really thank everybody for spending the time tonight to hang out with us and we'll look forward to seeing you next Tuesday night as well. Beauty. Thanks, Andrew. Um, while we're sort of going through the questions, I'll start another poll as well. There was a, a comment that suggested maybe we should get a bit of demographics as well. So I've launched a poll asking how old people are and listed a few groups in there. And while you are clicking on that, uh, we'll go through just a few questions of the many that are asked and thank you for everyone, to everyone for asking them. Um, any that we don't get to, it's just a matter of time really. Um, so we've run a little bit long tonight. Um, future webinars will be about 75 minutes, but I've highlighted a few. Um, Nadia has asked, do we know why social media platform use has dropped within the 18 to 24 age group? Yeah, the, the social media platform particularly is, has dropped because that particular age group is moving towards messaging platforms and messaging platforms are called messaging platforms and are not included in the kind of social media um, space specifically. So that's why there is a movement. And that's why I guess Facebook has invested in Facebook Messenger so they can keep them. Snapchat is a messaging application, uh, as is um, as in WhatsApp is also. And there's there's a huge take up of those kind of tools. And I guess that presents a whole new challenge for digital marketers to to decide: Are we do we need to be, and how can we get into the message messaging space in an authentic way, or or do we need to abandon our other social media platform use to do that? Thank you. Uh, an anonymous attendee is um, given a specific case, um, but I'll just generalize it. Um, they're talking about timing and there's like a, for them, it's a harvest time in agricultural business. How do you deal with, uh, I guess, sort of um, seasonal or, or some, a, a big launch or, or something along those lines? Is there anything you can say to that? Uh, absolutely. I love, absolutely love the ability to time these things. I, I do dislike um, automation of, of social media posts because that's a little bit problematic because something might happen which doesn't reflect the mood of which your post is going to be received in the audience space. So things which are spontaneous and reflect issues and um, an awesome piece of video which was done a few years ago now was about the um, 
barley harvest up at North of Moree somewhere. And that particular barley goes into Peroni beer, I believe. So it's barley, I assume it's barley. And uh, they did some great work around that. And it was harvest time and it was on the farm and they're chucking Peronis around. It was just clever. It was early summer. It was getting hot. It was beer time. And it was really nice. Um, other things would be, um, well, there was a, quite a bit of action in America last week over the midterm elections. In Australia, um, uh, when, when Q&A and Four Corners go to air on Monday night, there's a whole group of people who are having particular conversations about stuff. So if you wanted to launch a new particular uh, political party, and um, um, I tell you, the one that was the most famous for me was a, it was an SBS TV show. They've run it. Uh, two versions of it now called Go Back to or Back to Where You Came From. Social media went bad for that and people who were refugee advocates jumped in to the social media feed during those live television shows or those recorded TV shows going to air and use that moment, that moment in time, that hour that that TV was on to raise tens of thousands of dollars for their cause for looking after refugees because Australians were horrified in that moment. Social media gave them an opportunity to jump in in that moment with here's my solution to, you know, refugees being kept away from Australia and being treated badly. Just give us some money and we'll make this happen. And it was an awesome thing. So really in whatever forum you think, whether it's the local council and it's rate time, whether there's a, a shark attack on one of the Northern beaches, for example, um, uh, there's, there's a moment to use social media and make it really work hard for you through clever use of timing and um, ambient events, I would call it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Graham's asked, uh, how do we avoid damage to reputation? Um, and how to avoid it with a question matrix prior or and how to rescue after a bad move? Ah, uh, cool. So a couple of things there. Probably one of them is to have a strategy before you start. If you just bring the... and what often happens in, in social media is um, someone will employ a smart young intern out of um, the university and uh, they go, hey, Amy Whitfield will be all over this one for me. And uh, they'll pop into your business and um, there she might be even a young Olympian. Olympian. There's been a few issues with, with those guys as well. And they're just not in the groove of strategic social media management. And they're sort of shooting from the hip or posting from the hip. They're not thinking about their personal profile versus their organizational profile. And as mentioned, there's really no, there's no, there's a, there's no line between those two things. You cannot have a personal profile, which is in contradiction to what your um, um, corporate or, or business profile needs to be. You need to have synergy in those two places. So you need to manage that right from the get go. If you have a strategy up front, like as per our worksheet and say, well, we're going to post, we're going to use this kind of language. We're only going to use these kind of images. Then it stops someone from, taking that, you know, just a, what seem, might seem a good idea of a picture of, a, you know, let's say it's a fish carcass on the beach and then they post it about, you know, clean up in the Byron Shire and there's a shark attack the next day and things just go pear-shaped from there. If you have a social media risk issue, there's a range of people around that can help you and there's some organisations which specifically will do stuff in your social media channels to uh, push poor stories or bad stories or controversial stories down through your feed by putting in higher uh, performing different content. Um, in some cases, you have to pull back. In other cases, you have to dive in and do more stuff in that space. But it has to be carefully managed. That's the big thing. It's not just, a, oh, yeah, let's make a post. Off we go. Beauty. Thanks for that. And Amy's actually... So I said something in the chat, have a second, of, have a second set of eyes go over anything that feels sensitive. That's probably sound advice. Um, I've started sharing the, the poll results. The 47% of people fall within the 35 to 49. And then there's a bit of a bell curve on the side. Um, we'll, we'll share that result in the course page as well. Um, there's been a few comments and questions about Tim, your, your, um, your platform or tool um, where, where there's people having a few issues with that. Chuck your questions about um, those sorts of issues in the forums. The, there's a weekly forum for each module. Um, we'll sort of look at any comments that come up and sort of troubleshoot and, and get back to people as quickly as possible. Um, I reckon we've run long enough tonight, so I'll hold over all the other questions as well. If we didn't get to a, a question, it's not a mark about off the question. It's not a 
a knock on the question. It's just a, a question of time. So add your questions into the forums as well. Start long threads and give them a proper treatment. Um, other than that, um, I'll leave it with the final question, I think, which is, Andrew, which bike do you ride from your Twitter profile, which you just asked? Okay. Um, I've got a number of motorbikes, but the one in the profile is a motor guzzy, which I love dearly, but um, somewhere in the, in the, in the realms of work and being a parent, I had to give that one away, but I do have a trail bike now, a Hasselberg, and I do love motorcycle riding. Well, do be careful. Um, I guess, uh, <laughs> beauty, that's all for tonight, I reckon. Um, thank you so much for Tim, Chantel, Angus, Andrew, Amy for popping in. Um, Sophie for her tweets and the cat. So, Sophie for the tweets, Claire for the tweets. It's a, it's a, we're, we're all learning something out of this, actually. It's, it's, this is a, an amazing exercise for IT masters as well, where we're probably going to change the way we do things out of this short course as well. Hope you're all getting something out of it as well. So thanks very much. And I'll leave the final word to Andrew. Well, excellent. Thanks to everybody joining in tonight. We've had a, an awesome group of people online. Um, I apologize for my little long-windedness there, but we will pick up, as Guy mentioned, those extra questions that we didn't get to tonight. Um, stay tuned because we've got fantastic guest speakers over the next three weeks and then we're going to get together on the final night look at some of the stats we've shared wrap up the key points about applied social media and um hopefully give you lots of value out of that uh twitter's been going nuts with uh, lots of posts there thank you very much for getting involved in that and um uh yeah awesome look forward to next week and uh have a great week till then